Today we celebrate graduation Sunday, and so as he probably looked at the young men and women entering uh, the uh, nave, wearing gowns and all that stuff, he probably recalled uh, your graduation. And this is a good time to kind of reflect on some of the things that uh, are associated with it. And one of the things that you probably uh, have uh, heard so many times uh, during graduation is uh, the speeches that people give. And one thing that all about, just about all the graduation services that I've attended, uh, they all have the same speech kind of wrapped differently, but the message is just the same old thing. Uh, you know, you accomplished a lot, which you have, and, uh, and, and we, we, we acknowledge that, and uh, now you're going out to this world. And the world is going to throw all kinds of things at you, but you will overcome. So go out into the world. That's the message of it. Now, the problem is, is that those speeches and graduation speeches, especially if you go to graduation that takes place outside, and it's hot, and the sun is black, and it's just so long. Those things are just so long, and he could kind of like, all right, just, just compress that message into some, something short, right? And I think that um, people can do that. Uh, a, a pastor friend of mine, uh, he was uh, serving at one point in the Raleigh-Durham area, and he was involved with all the schools there, and uh, he was in charge of inviting speakers. Uh, and so they picked the speaker that he's very famous. And uh, so the pastor friend of mine, he's retired and now lives in our area. And so he contacted this famous speaker and he asked him, can you come and speak to us? And what is your rate if you speak for an hour? So the guy gave him a rate. And uh, uh, my, my friend said, well, that's a lot. What about what if you speak for half an hour? And guess what? The price doubled. <laughs> it's because, you know, as Shakespeare put it, brevity is the soul of wit. If you can compress your message into something short and you can accomplish it, it's a lot better. It's just like sermons, you know, when they drag on. You have the time, you don't remember what they're all about. I think the pros of that are people who make commercials. You see, they have only 30 seconds. Sometimes they make short films, a couple of minutes, where they communicate something profound, maybe not so much, but something powerful, and they compress it in a very brief message. And what came to my mind is an example of that was done by Nike, okay? Nike. Everybody knows Nike, especially young people. And uh, a couple of years ago, this is, was the summer of COVID, okay? And that, as you recall, was also the summer of all the racial and social unrest. So you, might, you might, must have seen it. I know they showed it in the classrooms and everywhere. It was called, let me get it, Never Too Far Down. And it was a two-minute short film with a very powerful message. And they used uh, 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 people of great accomplishment. Of course, it was athletes because it's Nike. So they had LeBron James. Uh, they had Tiger Woods. Uh, and they had Serena Williams. And so, and the message of that was that no matter what happens, no matter what troubles you go through, no matter the setbacks, we will overcome. And it's a common theme among the athletes and in the sports industry. And, of course, we would expect nothing less from a company. Nike is named after the goddess, the Greek goddess of victory. And who, wanted, who wouldn't want to be crowned with the uh, laurel wreath of victory. And most athletes will tell you that if you want to succeed, uh, you have to have more than just physical strength, right? You have to have a winner's mindset. 
that perseveres no matter what, that rises to every challenge. And when you are pushed back, uh, you get back up and you overcome because winners are overcomers. And those who overcome will certainly win in the end. Now, that's the message of the commercial. And that's basically the message of all the graduation speeches, right? And maybe you've heard it applied even to your life as a Christian. That, well, for example, we celebrated confirmation last Sunday. And I've heard it, actually somebody mention it uh, to me that, well, confirmation is it's kind of like graduation, right? And I think we think about it that way, that uh, children are put through this intense training, kind of like a, a spring training, and, 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 and they're, they're, they're there to, to be built up so that they can go out and really win the battle. You know, the world is going to throw things at them, and they need to stand up. They need to overcome. If you want to look beyond that, uh, I invite you to think about the season of Lent. And sometimes we look at that as some sort of a spring training as well. And in fact, we kind of use that language when we uh, think about intensifying your struggle against sin. And, and, and we have all those extra services, right, and devotional books, and, and we call you to, to reflect about, upon your sinfulness and to realize the, 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 that's why Jesus died is because you're sinful. And, uh, and, and sort of like we look at it as sort of like a time to uh, improve your life, to I- increase uh, your faith, to... Uh, Uh, strengthen your relationship with God. But sometimes we take it a little bit farther than that, and and we say that, well, if I could do a little better, if I could read more scripture, if I can come to more church services, if I can do more devotions, and uh, I'll be drafted into uh, God's team. I'll become one of uh, 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 Christian soldiers, and I'll go out, and into the battle in the God's army. If I can only get through this valley of the shadow of death and make it to the top of the mountain to see a glorious sunrise. So, how have you done? One of the uh, words from the Monday, Thursday uh, bulletin that comes at the end of those 40 days, right, almost, yeah, I want to quote to you, during, the season, the, during this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to intensify our struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that prevents us from trusting in God and loving each other. You know, the season of uh, the Sundays of Easter, this is, the next Sunday will be the last Sunday of Easter. So, and then Ascension is this Thursday. So, we're almost at 40 days after those 40 days of Lent. Have you and I accomplished what we've been called to do so far? Or at least measurably improved in all those things we were called to do in our walk with Christ and in our relationship with others? So is Lent or confirmation some sort of a training to prepare us, a spring training? We, would you make the team? Here's another quote from uh, the Monday Thursday liturgy. But when we examine our hearts and consciences, we find nothing in us but sin and death from which we're incapable of delivering ourselves. And that's the truth. You and I can be overcome. And no amount of spiritual resolutions or confirmation vows or any kind of other vows or a good old grit can stand up to the old sinful nature. 
But thanks be to God, we're not drafted into Christian soldiers based on our personal performances and potential. We are grafted, D versus G, grafted into Christ's kingdom based on the overcoming power of God's grace in Christ Jesus now, there's a reason why I've been going back to Monday, Thursday, because the gospel text for today actually comes from that day, the day before Jesus was crucified. It's on Monday, Thursday. Of course, they didn't call it back then that, but at any rate, we call it Monday, Thursday. This is where Jesus spoke these words. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And it sounds like this is a, a graduation speech, right? I mean, he's about to finish with his disciples. They're done with three years of being in confirmation class with him. Um, and they're about to be released into the world, and he's saying to them, well, you have tribulations in this world, but take heart. And it almost like sounds like a, a more of a, a Nike commercial, a Nike commercial, right? Because it's condensed, a powerful message that is condensed in a short statement. And the reason that we tend to look at this passage this way is because we tend to think ourselves and picture ourselves just like the disciples did, as like innocent children about to graduate and about to be thrown into the world, into a cruel world that's going to do its best to send tribulations our way. And, and the disciples, they thought they figured it all out too. Because that's why they say, ah, now you're speaking plainly and not using figurative speech. Now we know that you know all things and do not need anyone to question you. This is why we believe that you came from God. We, get, we got it now, Jesus. We understand it's as plain as day. We know. We believe. We're ready for it. And Jesus answered them, do you now believe Behold, the hour is coming, indeed it has come, when you will be scattered, each to his own home, and you will leave me alone. In other words, this is no graduation speech. This is no pep talk before the big game. This isn't an affirmation that the disciples are now ready and prepared to go into the world they're good enough to now overcome the world and really overcome anything. No, he says, you will be scattered. You will leave me alone. You will be overcome. Now, this is one, uh, one side is of, the, of the road. You know, you can fall into the ditch and say, okay, you know what? Uh, 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 I can do it myself. And, and, and with God's help, I will overcome. Now, that's wrong. The other side of the ditch, you know, the other ditch you can fall into is to say, you know what, I'm a miserable sinner. And I know I can never overcome. And, uh, but that's not where Jesus wants you to go. He says, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Now, the reason I brought on Nike is, is, is beyond what I, I just mentioned to you earlier. Because the word overcome that is used by Jesus is uh, it's in Greek, you know, the Greek letters you transliterate into Latin letters, and it's going to spell what we would read as Nike, okay? Um, and so that's, that's where the word comes from. And unlike the Greek goddess of victory, though, the savior of the nations... He comes, but not to declare the winner of the athletic competition. 
but to be the victor of the battle that we could never win against sin, death, and the devil. And he wins this battle so that, not so that he could be crowned with a, uh, with a wreath of laurels, but he comes so that he can willingly bear the crown of thorns so that you can wear the crown of life, the crown of eternal life. Take heart. You cannot do it. But Jesus says, I have overcome the world. I've won the battle. But instead of keeping it for myself, I give the crown of eternal life to you. And you see that at the cross. Look at the cross. Because there at the cross, the whole weight of your sin is scared to the cross by Jesus. And then when Jesus is taken off that cross, he is placed in the tomb. And he says, look at the tomb. What do you see? And what we celebrate today, it's almost the last Sunday of Easter, but really every Sunday we celebrate Easter and the fact that the tomb is empty. For there the dead body of the Son of God was laid. And from there he rose three days later. The tomb is empty. Your sin is removed. Your guilt is gone. As the flood waters came over the earth and overcame the earth and brought death in the same way the blood of Christ shed on Calvary's cross brought death to your sin and it gave life to your soul. And because he lives, because he overcame, we too will live forever. And you and I will overcome in Christ. Amen.